Semmelweis reflex is a term for something very human, the automatic rejection of new information that challenges what we already believe. In this presentation, I will do three things. First, I will tell the story of Ignaz Semmelweis and why this reflex was named after him. Second, I will explain the psychological mechanisms behind this pattern. Third, I will look at how this reflex appears in modern life and how to reduce it in ourselves without becoming naive or gullible. Part 1. The Story of Ignaz Semmelweis Ignaz Semmelweis was a doctor in the 19th century who worked in a maternity clinic. At that time, many women died from childbed fever after giving birth. There were two wards in the hospital, one run by doctors and medical students, one run by midwives. The death rate in the doctor's ward was much higher than in the midwife's ward. Semmelweis wanted to know why. He observed that doctors often went directly from examining dead bodies in the morgue to delivering babies. They did this without washing their hands in a meaningful way. Midwives did not perform autopsies. Semmelweis proposed a simple idea. Doctors should wash their hands with a chlorine solution before examining patients. When they did this, the death rate dropped sharply. You might expect the medical community to celebrate him. They did not. Many colleagues rejected his conclusions. Some were offended by the suggestion that doctors were responsible for spreading disease. Others did not like that his explanation did not fit the medical theories of the time. Germs had not yet been widely accepted as the cause of disease. Semmelweis became more frustrated and more aggressive in his communication. The resistance only increased. He died before his ideas were fully accepted. Later, with the work of Louis Pasteur and others, germ theory became standard, and Semmelweis was seen in a different light. The reflexive rejection he faced became a symbol. Part 2. What we mean by Semmelweis reflex today. Today, Semmelweis reflex is used more broadly. It describes the automatic, emotional rejection of new evidence or new ideas because they contradict established beliefs, traditions, or professional habits. The key is that the rejection happens quickly and defensively. The person does not seriously test the new idea. They dismiss it in order to protect what is already familiar. This reflex can appear in science, in business, in politics, in families, and in personal relationships. Anywhere humans build identities, and routines. Part 3. Psychological Mechanisms Behind the Reflex Several psychological processes feed the Semmelweis reflex. First, cognitive dissonance. When new information clashes with our beliefs or our self-image, it creates mental discomfort. For example, a doctor who sees himself as a careful and ethical professional does not want to accept that his routine might be harming patients. Rejecting the new idea removes the discomfort. Second, confirmation bias. We pay more attention to information that supports what we already believe and ignore information that contradicts it. If we are convinced that our method is the best, we will notice every success and downplay every failure. Any new method looks suspicious. Third, Ego and status. Admitting that a new idea is better can feel like admitting that we were wrong or that someone lower in the hierarchy has made a discovery that we missed. This can be painful for people who have built their identity on being experts. Fourth, group identity and loyalty. Professionals often belong to tight communities. Medicine, law, academia, corporations, even families. When a new idea threatens the shared story of the group, rejecting that idea can feel like an act of loyalty. Accepting it can feel like betrayal. Fifth, fear of uncertainty. 
New ideas open questions. If this belief is wrong, what else is wrong? If this procedure is unsafe, how many people have already been harmed? Sometimes the easiest way to avoid that anxiety is to deny the problem. All these factors create a strong pressure to say, this cannot be true, instead of, let me examine this carefully. Part four, philosophical angle, how we handle knowledge. From a philosophical perspective, Semmelweis reflex raises questions about how humans manage knowledge. On paper, we like to imagine that beliefs change when evidence changes. In practice, beliefs are tied to identity, power, and emotion. Thomas Kuhn wrote about scientific paradigms and how they resist change until anomalies accumulate. Semmelweis is a classic example of this resistance. The reflex shows a tension between two values. On one side, stability. We need stable frameworks to act in the world. Constant doubt would paralyze us. On the other side, openness. We need to be able to update our views when strong evidence appears. Semmelweis reflex is what happens when stability wins at any cost. We protect our existing models so aggressively that we attack new information even when that information is life-saving. The philosophical challenge is to develop what some call intellectual humility, a posture that allows us to be confident enough to act, but humble enough to adjust when reality proves us wrong. Part five, modern expressions of the Semmelweis reflex. This reflex is not confined to 19th century medicine. You can see similar patterns today. In organizations, new data that challenges a successful product can be rejected because people do not want to admit that change is needed. In relationships, feedback about hurtful patterns can be dismissed because it is easier to say you are exaggerating than to examine our own behavior. In public debates, people can reject new research on health, climate, or technology because it clashes with their political identity. On a personal level, even simple advice can trigger this reflex. Suggestions about sleep, diet, spending, or screen time may be rejected with, that cannot be the problem even when there is strong evidence. The pattern is the same. New information threatens comfort. The automatic reaction is to reject the information rather than adjust the belief or the behavior. Part six, recognizing the reflex in ourselves. It is easy to see Zemmelweis reflex in other people. It is harder to see it in ourselves. Here are a few signs that the reflex might be active. One, you feel insulted or angry as soon as you hear a new idea before you evaluate its content. Two, you focus on attacking the person rather than testing the evidence or the reasoning. Three, you use phrases like, everyone knows, or it has always been done this way, as if they were arguments. Four, you avoid reading or listening to sources that challenge your position because you fear they might be persuasive. Five, you notice that people around you are hesitant to bring you new information because they expect a hostile reaction. If these signs appear often, the reflex may be stronger than you think. Part seven, reducing Semmelweis reflex without losing critical thinking. The goal is not to accept every new idea. Some new ideas are wrong, unsafe, or manipulative. So the point is not blind openness. The point is disciplined openness. A few practical steps. First, slow down your first reaction. When you feel yourself saying, this is nonsense, pause, and ask, what evidence is this based on? Can I describe it accurately before I reject it? Second, separate identity from ideas. Remind yourself that changing a belief does not mean you lose your value as a person or a professional. It means you are updating your map of reality. Third, invite structured challenge. 
ask at least one person you trust to tell you when they think you are rejecting something too quickly. Listen without immediate defense. Fourth, learn basic tools of critical thinking. Instead of asking, do I like this idea? Ask, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What would change my mind? Fifth, remember, the cost of refusal. Semmelweis faced a system that rejected a simple practice that could have saved thousands of lives. When you feel the urge to dismiss a new idea, ask if I am wrong here, what is the possible cost? Part eight, limitations and warnings. The term Semmelweis reflex can itself be misused. Sometimes people label any skepticism as a reflex in order to silence critics. They say, you do not agree with my idea. Therefore, you are just another Semmelweis case. That is not accurate. Healthy skepticism is essential. It asks for evidence, mechanisms, and careful testing. Semmelweis reflex is different. It refuses to look at evidence in the first place. So the label should be used carefully. It is a mirror for self-reflection, not a weapon to shut others down. Conclusion. Semmelweis reflex is the human tendency to reject new information that threatens our beliefs, status, or identity. The story of Ignaz Semmelweis is a tragic example of how costly this reflex can be. From psychology, we learn that cognitive dissonance, confirmation bias, ego, and group identity all feed this pattern. From philosophy, we learn that humility and openness are essential if we want knowledge to progress. In daily life, the antidote is not to accept everything. The antidote is to slow down, examine evidence, and keep enough humility to update our views when reality insists. Sometimes growth begins at the exact moment we stop saying, that cannot be true, and start saying, if this is true, what do I need to change?